Welcome back. The immigration controversy is not only causing a stir in the nation's capital, it's also generating a backlash at some of the nation's wealthiest vacation retreats, where authorities are fighting back against businesses that hire undocumented workers. CNBC's Margaret Brennan is in Tony, Southampton, New York, right now with the story. Margaret? Maria, from Nantucket to Florida, and here in the east end of Long Island in Southampton, the issue of illegal workers and of day laborers isn't just a matter for border states and border towns. It's also hitting resort areas, and it's causing headaches for local governments and the local economy at a time when demand for labor is at a high. Southampton is a town that goes from 4,000 residents in the off-season to 20,000 during the peak. Restaurant employees, gardeners, painters, farm workers, demand for seasonal labor is always high. But this summer, the issue is acute. Suffolk County, Long Island, has a fewer number of visas earmarked for seasonal workers, leaving upwards of 700 jobs unfilled this summer. Bottom line, high demand for those laborers who are willing to trim hedges, mow lawns, and bust tables. Here we do everything. We learn everything. In the four years I've been here, I've learned painting, landscaping, roofing, everything to do with construction. Another concern for workers, they can't afford to live in the area. Even though the shortage has driven up pay for workers to an average of $18 per hour, the cost of living here has driven many workers out of these wealthy enclaves. They need in the farm industry. If we don't produce enough in the farm here, they have to import from other places and the cost of produce will be much higher. Towns here are split over just what to do about suspected illegal and day laborers. East Hampton police started reporting those hiring day laborers to the IRS as a tax issue, while Southampton has decided to treat groups of workers as a safety issue only, leaving the immigration part of that debate to federal authorities. It forces an employer who would historically hire somebody using the H-2B program and hire them legally has to look at different ways to ensure their business continues. And what's happening here on the east end of Long Island is really a snapshot of how the federal debate over immigration is affecting local municipalities, governments, local economies. And I do have to tell you, even just being here throughout the day, we've been stopped by individuals who feel very strongly on this issue simply because of the visible presence of day laborers in addition to some of the politically loaded elements of this story. Maria? It's a really good point, Margaret. Thanks so much. More now on the economic impact of a crackdown on illegal immigrants. Does it pose a challenge to keeping America great? We get into that now with Steve Moore of the Wall Street Journal editorial board, along with Jack Martin, director of special projects with the Federation for Immigration Reform, or FAIR. Gentlemen, nice to have you on the program. Welcome. Hi, Marie. Thank you. Glad to be with you. Stephen, let me kick it off with you. Give us the ripple effects of this crackdown. Well, you know, I was just out at the beaches of Delaware this past weekend, Maria, and I, my family and I were just shocked almost everywhere you went, whether it was a restaurant or a hotel or any eating establishment, almost everybody who's working in those service jobs is an immigrant. And, and uh, it's interesting, Maria, that most of them are Eastern Europeans, not Mexicans or Guatemalans or some Central Americans. I do think that one of the implications of this crackdown, if we start sweeping through these places and taking out the illegal immigrants, I just wonder where the workers are going to come from. Remember, some of the workers in these establishments are legal. Some of them are Ill illegal. Uh, most of the illegals have illegal paperwork and false passports, so you don't know which ones are which. So how significant has the backlash been from business? Well, so far it hasn't been too bad. The, the uh, Bush administration has started to clamp down as this issue has taken on more political fervor. But the, the real fear of businessmen I talk to and people in the service industry and the agriculture industry is it's going to get a lot worse and they feel like they're going to be a suspect class of employers in the months ahead. Jack, who really should be the ones cracking down on this? I mean, uh, should local police be the ones during the crackdown? Well, the issue, Maria, basically is we have to have a level playing field so that all employers are playing by the same rules. The idea of allowing the guy down the street to put you out of business because he's hiring illegal workers at lower wages doesn't make any sense. But we don't have the way right now to verify the work-related documents. This is what Secretary Chertoff of Homeland Security says that he needs to do the job. We have a smorgasbord of visa categories, uh, temporary workers, immigrant visas, uh, cultural exchange students coming in for summer jobs. That's probably what Steve was seeing uh, out there in the, in the posh areas. 
was foreign students coming into work. And, and the bottom line from your standpoint is you just want to make sure that Americans are getting a crack at the jobs first and that the uh, immigrants coming in are, are, are legal. Exactly. We want to see all people coming into the country legally, whether they're tourists, students, immigrants, refugees, whatever. You know, Maria, I'm certainly all in favor of that. And I think this really harkens back to the immigration bill that was defeated. I didn't agree with everything in that bill. But one of the very positive features is it would allow more guest workers, allow more agriculture workers. So some of this work that we're talking about that's been done, let's face it, for generations by uh, migrant workers, that it could continue to be done, but it could be done through lawful channels, not by people coming across the border illegally. So what do you want to see happen in Congress? I'd love to see a guest worker program. I'd like to see more of the H-1Bs, which is the high-tech, uh, high-skilled workers come in, and maybe some backlog reductions. So those people who've been waiting in line uh, lawfully and waiting their place in line have a, have a way to get into. Is that realistic? Do you think we'll see that, Jack? Well, the big problem is Steve wants to open up the doors and allow uh, employers to bring in whomever they want, uh, and that has a, uh, the effect over time of driving down wages. We think our primary concern has to be American workers, make sure that they have the first opportunity at those jobs, maintain uh, wages at a living level, and then if we have a true demonstration of need, then we can bring in temporary workers. Steve, realistic? I'm sorry, say again? Is that realistic? Do you think we uh, could see know, that? These, these immigrant workers are not getting these, you know, below minimum wage salaries and so on. They're getting pretty high salaries. Right. The problem the employers say is they can't find the American workers. Uh, in a lot of these states, like in Virginia where I live, you know, we have uh, more jobs than we have workers. If you get rid of some of these migrant workers, I don't have any idea who's going to do the work, Maria, neither do the employers. Yeah, it's all good points. General, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much. Thank